What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Mutt Tips. I'm your host, Sean Taylor from the Made Up Theater. And before we get started, make sure to like the video, comment with somebody you would like addressed in a future video, and as always, subscribe on YouTube to be informed of upcoming videos. But without further ado, let's jump into today's topic, five tips for getting unstuck. Before we get started, just know that getting stuck in improv scenes is totally natural, okay? That, that sense of dread of not knowing what to do or say, freezing up essentially. And it happens to everybody from beginning improvisers all the way to advanced. I experience it myself as well. And it all just really comes down to just being stuck in here, inside the head, rather than being present-minded with our fellow improvisers. So let's jump into some ways that we can fight the stuckness. Tip number one is quite simply, it. Okay, this is very uh, effective and powerful to have on stage is kind of have that attitude of just like relieving yourself of the burden of fear of judgment because that's what it is. That's what it means. It's the audience's judgment because a lot of the times it's not even really there. It's, you know, the judgment that you might feel from your fellow improviser because again, it's not probably there. And again, fuck your own judgment because that's definitely there and we need to get rid of it. That creates the sense of judgment that you feel from other entities. So that's what I oftentimes do on stage, like especially right now, we're performing for no live audience. So that sense of just like focusing on my scene partner and just having fun with them, that's where the fuck it nature comes from, you know? It's about having fun, throwing caution to the wind, the rules, you know? Like a lot of people get so stuck because they, they're afraid of breaking rules in improv. Oh, I got a yes and, I got to avoid questions or stranger scenes or transaction scenes. You know, I got to do activities and avoid talking heads, all that stuff. And of course, that ultimately makes us get stuck and makes us break even more rules. So I'm totally fine with people breaking rules as long as you're having fun and your whole cast is having fun on stage. For example, I do a musical improv class and some people get really stuck in that because they're afraid of their voice sounding bad or afraid of rhyming and all that stuff. And I just tell them, hey, you know what? When you sing, and usually they sing out to like the audience, I'm usually way up there in the back row. I say, hey, when you sing and you feel that sense of like stuckness coming up or that fear of judgment, I want you to just go like this to me, okay? Raise your middle finger high, feel free to look me dead in the eyes and it helps them a lot of the times because I'm that, I'm that high status teacher and I'm giving them the permission to just say, hey, f you, Sean. So try that out, f it. Tip number two is silence is golden, okay? A lot of people on stage, when they get stuck, there's that fear of not knowing what to say. So don't say anything. Be silent, be present minded in a silent moment, okay? So during the silence, like maybe look at your scene partner. Like maybe they say something along the lines of, you know, uh, it, you need to tell me why this relationship is going to work because I don't know how. And there's that fear of not knowing what to say, maybe to justify a choice or a, answer a question that your partner gave you. So just go silent and just like, you know, like maybe look around like you're thinking of an idea or something to say to like win the affection of somebody. And maybe instead of being confused as you, cause this is a lot of times like that, that moment where they're stuck is just like, it, it's the improviser being like questioning, I don't know what to say. Why don't be the character who doesn't know what to say? That's better, you know? Because that's a perfectly reasonable, justifiable, you know, moment for a character. Like, I don't know how to justify why we should be together. So like have that moment and then maybe let it escalate to something else. Like. You know, like almost that giving up moment or acceptance and then let it inform what you say next. Try that out. Don't feel like you have to rush to dialogue. Take it in, repeat what was said to you in your head a few times and then let it impact you and then the dialogue will come more naturally. Tip number three is touch something, okay? Improv, again, is about making something up out of nothing and the thing that I think sometimes gets forgotten about is the environment. You know, getting stuck is not knowing what to say, but it's also not knowing what to do. And there's a lot of fun things to be done in an environment if we create it. So an example of this is take the, the, the movie Inglorious Bastards, okay? There's a great scene where, um, you know, operatives are meeting downstairs in a, a basement tavern and they're undercover and ultimately, it's a pretty fleshed out scene where eventually the operatives, you know, their cover's blown and there's a big like shootout. 
But before that happens, there's a lot of like things going on in the environment, you know? It's a tavern, so people are drinking. There's a moment where like both sides engage in, in like a, a card game where they're trying to guess each other's like identity, fictional character type of stuff. It's like a little playful game. But all this action, all of this like, you know, object work, it is all contributing to the tension that's happening. Oh my gosh, is the cover gonna be blown? You know, and it eventually does, and that's what creates just an even more impactful scene. So in a scene, if you feel like there's nothing going on, you don't see anything, just make a bold choice and just create something, okay? Like even like there's that moment of like getting stuck again, I go back to this, like, you know, like it, it feels like people have a mind grain on stage because they don't know what to say or do. Turn that into a choice that requires a physical motion and maybe an object, it's like, ah. And maybe you like open a cabinet or reach down to a table and like pop open some pills and take some Advil, you know? You can even reach over and grab some water too. The more you do, the better, because again, it's creating more of the environment. And then it gives your partner something to react to. Well, whoa, man, you seem a little stressed right now. Hey, work been tough for you? And it's just like, yeah, and it, I have more context now, right? It could be anything. Play around with just create, grab, just reach out into the ether, grab something, look at it, and it'll come to you like what it is. It could be anything, but just make a choice. Like I reached out in my, in my hand right now, it's a magic eight ball, you know, and I shake it. Will I find love? Ask again later. Crap, but it gave me something, right? That's all giving me stuff. So touch your environment, touch something. Tip number four is make an emotional choice. This is crucial because a lot of people, they are absent of uh, emotion on stage, like they don't feel anything, which makes it harder to improvise because you just don't feel. Like emotions guide action and dialogue. So having a, an emotion, uh, like a point of view, that will make improv easier. So like an example of this is like, oh, you're in a scene where there's like, you know, a conference room and the boss is like, oh, you know, Sean, I noticed there was a big loss uh, in uh, profits on quarter one to quarter two, you know? Uh, productivity was up, but unfortunately, profits are down. You need to explain this right now. And there might be like that sense of, oh gosh, I'm being Sean, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to justify, you know, loss of margins from quarter one to quarter two. Oh my gosh, interest rates, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, is uh, by turning it into an emotional response, at that point, it's it's not about that. Improv's not about like loss of profits. It's about the characters and their relationships to each other. So make it a strong emotional choice. And I might go to some silence for a second and you know, stare at them. You wanna know why? Because of you, you, you son of a your leadership sucks. And then boom, we have an interesting scene based on an emotion. So feel something, make a strong choice, a strong emotional choice in response to something even if it's something that may not provoke an emotional response. Like if you were in a meeting, you probably wouldn't say that. Uh, you might feel it inside, but you wouldn't say it. In improv, we get to say it, so feel it. Tip number five is commit stronger. Because again, being stuck on stage is, is a lot of the times a byproduct of just you playing too close to you. Especially for beginning improvisers. They sometimes get stuck in just playing themselves and it's difficult, especially in the early goings, to improvise as yourself, okay? Because again, there's that anxiety of just being wrong, not following the rules. You know, it's different. So playing a different character will make it easier. And you gotta commit strong to it. So like, for example, if you're uh, in doubt as a dog on stage, you know, a lot of people, when I see them play dogs, they'll be like, you know, maybe they'll go like this and be like, oh yeah, yeah, sure, rough, rough, you know? And it's just like, that's that's a dog level one. Let's get to a dog level 10. Yeah, there we go. So get to a dog level 10. What do dogs do? Be a dog right now in your house, but level 10 as though you are actually a dog. Like maybe you would like literally pick up your, your foot, scratch your ear, or uh, you know, like eat peanut butter. Um, 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 um. Or like when you bark, you go, you know, like, but like get into the character, okay? Like drag your butt on the ground. Because again, now you're a dog. So 
you know, you don't have to think about what to do or say. You're a dog, so it's gonna come out more naturally. The best way to practice this is go to that word generator, okay? The app is Improv Suggestion Generator. I'll put a link in the description. There's a, there's a ton of different types of suggestions here, okay? And what I want you to do is just click on one of these, okay? It could be anything. So like, for example, there's minor holidays. Minor holidays, what does that mean? I'm gonna click on it a few times and then just instantly commit to like celebrating that holiday, okay? So, Bagel and Lox Day? Well, come on, everybody! We got Schmear for you, we got Lox for you. Bring your keys because you put the key in the hole and unlock the bagel for potential growth inside your tummy. Ha <laughs> ha! Bagel and Lox Day! Just like that. I have no clue what the hell that is. I was probably wrong about the locks, but that's the thing. I committed to it, and hopefully I would uh, convince the audience that I'm correct. So try that out. I'll do one more object that fits in your hand, okay? I'm gonna be this object right now. A ring, okay? Ugh. I'm so lonely. I was just hoping someday I could find the finger to spend the rest of my days in. Oh, so lonely. I need a lonely soul just like me. Just like that, you know? It's, it's instant commitment. I didn't have to really think about what to do or say because I committed with my body, committed with my face, and thus it just makes improv easier. And that concludes this episode of Mutt Tips. Thank you so much, everybody, for checking it out. I hope you get unstuck. Again, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Mutt Tips. Bye. <laughs>